So I wanted to start with uh, just a couple polling questions here. And the first question is not talking about Canvas course reserves. The first question pertains to uh, your standard traditional library course reserves where you put books or you put films and, or other documents and they end up on a shelf and you go down and um, leave it there for the students. Okay, so actually many of you haven't. Okay, well that's the traditional way of if you want to make uh, books that you're using in your class or other texts or multimedia um, items such as films uh, available, you can assign a film or you can sign a book. Maybe the students don't want to buy the book. They can go to the library and they can check it out from the course reserve. So that's the traditional way. And that's what I've used you know, up until this, this past year uh, myself. Um, Okay, so the next, so let's move on to the next slide here. Oh, I see, you have to do it this way. Okay, so if you've used it, uh, what kinds of items have you used it for? Okay, so mostly books, but a little bit of some other things. So that's, for myself, um, all of the above would apply. I tend to use quite a few different uh, course reserves um, for my classes. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, let me just talk about why I ended up here giving this talk today. And uh, part of the reason is when I started teaching here, of course I had to prepare my classes, and which meant, as you know, accumulating all kinds of readings and resources and so forth for the students. And teaching a lot of classes that also deal with Southeast Asian studies meant that I had to find a lot of items that are not always readily available. So, uh, you know, often if I'm using like a Southeast Asian film, quite, you know, it's not always going to be the case that it's going to be in the library. So I was spending an amazing amount of time through emails with the librarians trying to track down all these different sources. And then so I was tracking them through all these emails and uh, it was a little unwieldy and uh, they were emailing me back and forth and I was keeping my lists and sending them updated lists. And then finally, one of the librarians said, why don't you use Canvas course reserves? And I was like, oh, well, I had no idea really what that was. <laughs> so, so I went in and had a look at it and uh, much to my delight, I discovered this is really great. I had no idea that such a thing existed. Um, and so uh, that's what I'm going to talk to you and show you briefly how to use today and talk to you about some of the um, benefits of this. So just quickly, um, how many of you have used the e-reserves, have used Canvas course reserves? Okay, just uh, almost nobody. Um, okay. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. This is changing rapidly. So a lot of you have used it. <laughs> okay, well that, that, really, that really turned around very quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you, just show you for those of you who haven't uh, what's there and I'm gonna share with you some of um, the things that I found particularly useful about it. So, um, right, so this is just one of my courses. This is a seminar, Mass Violence um, in Southeast Asia, mass violence and its aftermath, and this just shows a small portion of it. But what you can see here is that, you know, the first three items on there are films. Um, the fourth item on there that you can see is actually a book, and that's actually my book, but it comes in both two forms. It is available as an electronic reserve in the library. It's also available as a hard copy. And the, one of the really great things about course reserves and adding everything onto your list here is that you can include both hard copy things where people can go down to the library if they want the hard copy or if only a hard copy is available, but they can also just go to that item then once it's in here. And uh, one of the great things is that um, it's not only you that are accessing these things, but you can make this available to your students so they can find everything that they need for your course uh, or at least uh, most things that you would put on reserves um, in one place. So the beauty of that is that for things especially like films, if there are a lot of them now are electronically available, 
like maybe they're on Canopy or something like that, they can just simply click on it and watch it. Or if you want to play it in your class, you can just go to Course Reader, find it quickly, and watch it. You don't have to go looking it up or anything. So um, I'm going to walk you through it in just a minute, but I just want to call your attention to that Subscribe Now button that you see on there. That Subscribe Now, um, I don't know if you I can't, the mouse doesn't show it, um, up in the corner. That's so. If you're a student, uh, you can subscribe to the, to the course reserves that way, and you'll get updates on whenever your professor puts new things on there. OK, so um, here's the bottom of the list. You see that big button, Add Reserve Items? That's one of the ways that you can add reserve uh, items. So let me just go now to, um, well, I'm going to go in one second to show you how it's done. But first, just so you know, if you want instructions on how to do course reserves, it's all available uh, here at this website. And I notice there's a, for, uh, a document over there that has all that information as well. So, OK, so this is, we're going to do this. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Live here now. OK, so this is, let's see if I can maximize that. OK, so this is now I'm, I'm in the course reserves. And let's say I want to add another item. There's two ways I can do that. One is I can go here to this class tools, and I can say add reserve items. Or I could press that button that I showed you before in the beginning. So I'm just going to do that here now, add reserve items. So um, this is what it looks like. And it says here you can add an article or book chapter on e-reserve. And what that is briefly is you can request a particular book chapter, and they will go through the scan and put it in there for you. It's really great. Um, or you can just uh, put the article in, and they will collect it from the library. Or you can share the call number. The second is you, it could be a physical reserve, as I mentioned, such as a book. Or it could be a DVD. Um, or you can say it's an audiovisual item. So um, once you put that in, uh, then you need to fill in this information, uh, which is all pretty clear. And then you get to this, and they just changed this, this copyright or fair use thing. You have to select uh, one of these, that, and that basically says that you have the right for that copyright. And generally, most of the time, the top one is going to be the, the correct one, because the libraries have already worked through all the agreements. So. Um, I, that's my approach. <laughs> um, and uh, so then they have this thing here which says you can tag the item. I, I don't tend to use the, the tag the item too much because the way they say it's useful is that you can tag it like these are the readings for week one, these are the readings for week two. Uh, if you want to use those same items then for another class, then you can end up in a situation that everything's mistagged because you'd be using it for, for the other class. Because you can transfer over your course reserves from one course um, into another, which is very nice. So you don't have to enter all that um, information again. So um, that's, and then down here you have, uh, where can I find this item? You can upload it yourself. It's already online. Uh, I'll bring a copy in or let's find it. I found that let's find it button to be really, really helpful. And the great thing is they go out and they look for it. And then, then you know, inside the, your list of courses, and it'll give you the status of whether they found it yet. So it's like still pending. Um, or it'll say, it, I've had a case where, they, where it just simply wasn't available. And they'll just say it's not available. It'll, or, it'll say it's, or it'll just be there. And that's useful for your students also, especially if you something comes up where you want to add something during the course, they can see when it's coming on. So I've had that happen where like a, a new film or something has come out on something and I've wanted to add it. Um, so that's really useful. So that's uh, most of it in a nutshell. Um, I strongly encourage you to use it. And um, I don't think I have any time for questions, do I? Um, OK, well, I'll be available over there afterwards. So. Thank you very much.